My talk is about Calisphere and the online archive of California. Uh, let's see how this thing works. Uh -huh. uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm from the California Digital Library. We're actually in Oakland, across the bay, and um, we are under the University of California Office of the President. So we serve all 10 University of California campuses and the lab. Um, and we focus on things that are, make sense to do on a system-wide, excuse me, or consortial level. Um, so for example, we have a unified library catalog for the whole system. We license journals for the whole system. Um, we run an open source publishing platform for people who want to do, uh, to start journals, um, publish monographs even. Um, and also run a system to, to implement the open, so that people can deposit their material for open access to, to go along, uh, to, com to um, comply with the open access mandate that was passed several years ago. Um, and so I work in the Digital Special Collections group, um, and we run a couple of services that I will describe for you now. So we aggregate sort of as an introduction to those couple of services, we aggregate a couple of different things um, at the CDL. One thing is finding aids, um, which I don't know if you're familiar with this. They're basically descriptive records for collections. So in terms of archives, we're talking about descriptions of things in boxes. <laughs> um, how would you find those? How are they organized? Um, and these are talking about physical artifacts in the library. Um, and then the other side is digital content. So things that we've scanned in, mainly images, but also um, audio, video, um, and so on. So on the, the finding aid side, it's for people to figure out how to go and look at things physically. And on the other side, it's how to find things digitally. So I'll talk a little bit now about the, the finding aid uh, side of things. So this is the Online Archive of California. Um, it's been around since 1998. There are uh, over 45,000 collections represented here from across the state of California. Um, and this site has been through a few different iterations. It was last redesigned in 2009. Um, and we're talking actively about a uh, redesign. Um, and the idea is to collaborate more broadly now with institutions, um, the, the California uh, State Library, as well as other consortia around California and the West. So that's um, an exciting development. So this, and this site contains um, finding aids. So this is what a, an example of what a finding aid looks like. Um, and you can see here, this is a, a document or a collection called the California Fruit Exchange Documents Collection. Um, so it has a little bit of, of metadata um, information, what's, going, what's in this collection. It says the collection is open for research. Um, and you'll notice that there, it says there are no online items. So for a lot of the, the stuff in the, the OAC, this is just pointing you towards physical collections. If you're interested in this item, you would need to contact the institution itself. So in this case, it would be the California State Railroad Museum Library, and they would let you know how to come and look at these items, and this finding aid would tell you where these are available. Um, in some cases, there will be a link that will link you through to a digital object if there has been um, funding to digitize those objects, then you can go and look at that. Um, so I'll, f I'll focus mainly for today on the digital side of things, um, but some of you might be interested in, in this resource if you're interested in actually going physically looking at things. So, mm. Yeah, so you could, that is clickable. The contact, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it is hierarchical by institution. 
collection, and then items within the collection. Yeah. Any other questions before I move on to the digital side? You can also, I think there would be, there's gonna be a question and answer period as well, in case. Um, okay, so onto the, the digital side of things. Um, we run a site called Calisphere. Um, Calisphere is a portal to digital collections across California, across the state. Um, it's primarily developed and hosted by the California Digital Library, um, but the collections are owned and they've been contributed by all 10 UC campuses, plus libraries, archives, and museums across the state. Um, so I don't know if you know that UC, apart from having, um, obviously, a mandate to support the UC, also has a, a mandate for public uh, work for the state of California. Um, and mostly the material in here is um, special, what's called special collections type material. So unique uh, primary sources broadly. Um, and format wise, most of the now over a million objects are images, but we're, we're quickly aggregating more and more audio, video, even data sets. Um, so you can look for those to come online. Um, and this website was totally redesigned in 2015. Um, so it looks, looks pretty good, I think. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned, we're over a million objects now. We just recently hit that mark and that's from, we had, when we did the redesign, there were 400,000 objects. Um, we, uh, as part of the redesign, we, we redid how people, um, can contribute objects to the site. So it's now easier, it's more user friendly for contributing institutions than it was. We, we basically uh, will accept way more uh, metadata formats. Um, and we have many contributors, including the San Francisco Public Library, the LA Public Library, um, the Oakland Museum, and there's big contributors coming online right now, like the University of Southern California, the Getty. Um, so there's tons and tons of material in there to check out. Um, so once you are into the site, uh, you can search by keyword. So here, for example, you search by San Francisco earthquake, you can see that there's many thousands of items that come up. <laughs> um, in order to refine your search, you can filter by the item type. So like I said, most of the, image, most of the items are images, but you can also filter by decade, um, by the institution that contributed the collection, also by collection. So you see at the top right, there are links for contributing institution, um, collection, and then at exhibitions, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So you can make use of all these various uh, bits of functionality to narrow your search. Um, and like I said, the, the site mainly contains images at the moment, but one very exciting thing is that we're collecting more audiovisual material, and recently we got a video um, of, the filming of, Planet of the filming of the Planet of the Apes at UC Irvine. <laughs> so you could check out all kinds of things. Um, I'm constantly amazed at the diversity of materials that are on the site. Um, so as I mentioned, we also have something called exhibitions on Calisphere. This is the more sort of interpretive part of the site. Um, these are curated by contributors, so librarians, archivists, um, historians, and they cover a wide array of topics about California and California history. Um, both by time period, also um, there's a lot on there um, from a project called California Cultures. So I uh, encourage you to check that out. There's essays accompanying um, these exhibits as well. So for example, we have a, a group of exhibits that are on social reform from the 1950s to the 1970s. Um, and this contains then six exhibitions, including uh, things like the Civil Rights Movement, the Free Speech Movement, the Watts Rebellion, uh, and so on. So you can click into here and get into all kinds of images and some um, essays as well. And so you probably are here wondering, okay, what about for my research? <laughs> Where does, uh, how, how do I access this stuff? Um, so in terms of 
there's always the question of terms of use and copyright. Um, we have a page up that gives you some basic information. It's clickable from the top right hand corner of the site, always. Um, one thing to know is that anybody is welcome to view any page on the site and also link to any page on the site without any further permission. Um, so you can, for example, link to a particular page within the site from your own website. Um, no, no permission needed. Um, there's information on here about how to cite digital items. Um, as far as downloading the material, so if you wanted to download an image, um, some images are downloadable directly from the site. These are the ones that we host locally at the CDL. Um, and you'll see here the thing will pop up saying that there's a limited um, resolution image that you're getting. Um, so that's, that's freely available to you. Now, if you wanted to get a, um, a better image, so a higher resolution image, you would need to contact, contact the institution that contributed the image. So in this case, uh, I believe this might actually be the SFPL. Um, and then, in, we, so we aggregate materials from hundreds of institutions across the state. Each one has different terms, different copyright uh, conditions. So unfortunately, you would have to contact each one to figure out what their terms are in terms of using a higher resolution image or uh, audio or video for, for your research. Um, so another thing to note is I was just talking to Susan about. Um, we also contribute, uh, we have a pipeline that funnels all of our objects on Calisphere to the Digital Public Library of America. Um, and this is basically analogous to Calisphere, but on a nationwide level. So um, as you can see, there are over 21 million objects here. And this is a real treasure trove of, of uh, research material for you. Um, I encourage you to check it out. It was just, this site was also recently redesigned. Um, similarly, similar to Calisphere, you can browse by uh, keyword. You can also browse by topic. Um, there have exhibitions up there. Um, and really, I'm always amazed at the diversity of material that's there. Um, and there's, all, there's more and more coming online all the time. So I encourage you to, to check that out. And that was, that was what I had to show you. Thank you very much for having me. These are the URLs for the sites that I mentioned. Um, you can email me if you have any questions, and we'll have a question and answer period. Thanks.